I'd like to make a little comment about Hardline when you get to it. Okay, John, I think the time is now. Okay, double zero DPM. But you just remember now, the only reason they ever took this thing down is because it wasn't working very well. This is N zero RJ and W zero R, the Heart of America Radio Club. That, and one other thing I might add to that is, uh, buyer beware of uh, transmission line bargains. Uh, sometimes you can truly get a very good deal, but uh, if you see a piece of line someplace at a ham fest or whatnot, and the price is just too good to believe. Uh, and this is not only true of ham fest, but you know, in stores and what have you, some deal in the catalog. Uh, one of the things that is available and uh, used quite frequently uh, in the 11 meter world especially because of the expenses uh, not too great uh, and you can get a lot of it for not too much money is a type of coax called let's say just RG8 type there's also RG858 type but and not all of them that say RG8 type are in this category but at any rate there are some that don't have the uh, shield coverage in other words the braid on the outside is not as thick and that's probably all right if you're not too concerned about uh, interference coming in from the outside into your coax. But it is a type of line that uh, professionally, at least, we try to avoid. Uh, the biggest problem with it is that interfering signals from outside can get in on your transmission line, not into the antenna, but in the transmission line, and maybe cause you grief, for instance, from a nearby transmitter in the same room in zero RG. W0R and Heart of America Radio Club Net. Any further questions for Lloyd? And zero O A G. Go ahead, Tim. Okay, one thing I want to point out on the hard line is that um, a lot of people, or a few people, uh, a few stations will use it uh, going out to, to the tower, and even though it's a mismatch, the difference in attenuation will more than make up for the uh, difference in uh, in impedance. Yeah, that's true. Uh, as compared to some, if you have a choice of, well, let's say you've got, oh, I don't know, just an arbitrary X number of dollars to uh, spend, and you see some 75 ohm hard line that uh, somehow you can find out is in good shape, and like I said, doesn't have a bunch of holes in it and a bunch of problems, uh, and you can uh, get that, or say some RG8, uh, you're probably, uh, going to be better off again because of that loss uh, situation to go ahead and use the hard line provided you don't use a whole heck of a lot of it. I'm going to say one more time, just for fun, there's a lot of this hard line laying around in people's backyards that's practically worthless because like Lloyd says, it's got holes in it, it's worn out. and I mean, cable TV people, they don't tear this stuff down go in your backyard just for fun. It's because it's worn out. W0AT and W0 Kansas City, Missouri. And W0, this is in 0RG. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, I've been listening along here. Name here is Bob. I was going to say John talks about the throwaway, but most of the time you can go down to the uh, cable companies and places like that and buy uh, roll ends where there's pretty healthy pieces left over that they just haven't used because it didn't fit the run. So, uh, a guy looking, that'd be a good place to look is for the roll ends because it's brand new. Uh, NW0F. I go along with that. New stuff. But this stuff, that they just drop on the ground, you know. And I, I like that. I like that idea that at the end of the rolls business. A little caveat that in the broadcasting we use, and that is when we put in a station, uh, there's a couple of things that we try never to scrimp on. Now, our situation is a little bit different from ham radio because our antennas are typically way up in the air and it's uh, either costly or scary, <laughs> one of the two, to climb up there and do something with it. But also because it's one of the things that can put you off the air with almost no recourse until it's repaired. And we try to, as often as possible, use new transmission line and new antennas in zero RJ. WB0, IHR, the question. And new connectors. Yes, I forgot that. That's very true. Go ahead with the question. Now, this is WB0, IHR. I've noticed there's uh, 
two kinds of, quote, coax. I don't know the difference in them. But some has um, solid wire and others has stranded wires inside the coax, uh, which is the better for use. I find the solid wire breaks easier at connectors, but uh, I don't know which one's the best. Electrically, they really don't have any difference, but uh, you brought up the most important point. The uh, solid is generally a little less money and uh, sometimes a little bit easier to prepare, that is to remove the insulation and so forth from the inner conductor. Um, it should not be used in a place where the, where the line is going to be flexed a lot. Uh, I try not to use it except in situations where this line is going to be put in and left there for the foreseeable future and, and not moved, flexed, or anything like that. One thing to watch out for with that uh, solid center, especially in the, the RG58 and RG59 type cables, is when you're preparing it, that is, uh, uh, taking the, uh, into the dielectric portion off of that center conductor, be very careful not to nick that center conductor because even a small nick, uh, that copper's brittle enough that when you go to put the end on it, it may snap off and, well, y you'll be unhappy with yourself in zero RJ. Ah, uh, thank you. I've had that problem. Okay, this is W0RR in the Heart of America Radio Club Net. Any additional questions for Lloyd at the present time, please go. Uh, WA0TV with one more. One's all you get, sorry. Okay, well, K0UAA has his first one. Oh, let Bob ask his one more. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, just say yes or no. I take it that uh, dual uh, copper... Uh, insulated stuff that the phone company uses, I take it that's unsuitable for RF work, yes or no? If you're referring to twisted pair, generally yes. Thank you. This was, this should have been mentioned right at the first, first part of this program, and I'm sorry to say this, that it didn't happen, but any kind of twisted pairs or any kind of parallel wires Active transmission lines are not antennas, they're transmission lines. And the signals cancel each other as they go up and down the transmission line. It's as simple as that. Okay, K0 UAA. Yeah, you mentioned uh, uh, coax bargains. I was going to ask you a question. Um, say you're at a, a ham fast and uh, one guy over on one side of the room has a roll of coax, uh, RG8 type, uh, for uh, 30 cents a, a foot. And another guy, uh, uh, some, some brand you've never heard of. Another guy over here has, has Belden for uh, 45 cents a foot. Um, you mentioned uh, coverage, brake coverage. Uh, is, that, is that something... Uh, is that something you can see by by eye? And uh, what other uh, uh, what, what are the other characteristics that indicate quality in a, a coax cable? Over here? Yeah, that is something you can see with uh, some of these things. You can see with the naked eye. Obviously, the quality of the plastic they put in the dielectric is a little bit hard to judge. I think you kind of look at it and see if it looks and feels similar to uh, other cables. But uh, still, that's no indication of whether it may have some impurities or whatever like that in it. Uh, but braid coverage, yeah, you can see with uh, just by looking at it, you really ideally want to look down and see a braid covering uh, the cable. This is the part once you get the outer jacket off and look inside and see a copper or tinned copper braid. It may look like copper, it may look kind of silver, but you want to see that cover uh, almost all of, the, uh, of that inner dielectric insulator. Uh, a good, tight-looking braid is an indication of cable quality. Uh, many times you'll look at some and you'll see, uh, well, if you got foam dielectric, which is kind of white, you'll see little splotches of white in between the uh, wires that make up the braid. Uh, that is a cable that does not have the kind of shielding that uh, the tightly braided cable has. Uh, other than that, uh, the outer jacket, is it uh, really thin? Uh, or is it a decent thick jacket that's going to protect the cable when it's, uh, protect that braid when it's pulled over a sharp corner or something like that? Uh, those kind of things are what you can look at and see. 
Uh, most any other characteristics of the cable almost have to be tested in a sort of in a semi-laboratory environment to really know. But uh, brand names uh, can make you feel comfortable, and there's certainly some that are uh, universally good. And you mentioned one of them. Uh, but there are some other very good cables out there on the market that uh, don't have the more familiar brand names. So um, it, it, it's sad to say that you can't always tell a book by its cover, but that's kind of where we're at. I'll bring, I'll bring up another point here, too, about this business about transmission lines. If you really want to get high-quality stuff, what you have to do is test each and every piece that you buy. In other words, that's, you, just, you just don't roll it off, roll it off, with a, off on a spool and say that everything's all right. It has to be tested, as a matter of fact. When you get up to 99.13 and stuff like that, you're, you're talking about VHF and and uh, UHF, way up there, man. Transmission lines are very, very important. Hey, Lloyd, may I have it for a minute? W zero R Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, I'll add the N zero R J. Go ahead. Let me close this sucker out, and you guys can do with it whatever you want. Give up yet? You got it. You didn't. Comment. Okay, anyone with or without traffic bulletins, emergency or priority traffic, or just wishing to check in, please call W0RR. Okay, hearing none at this time, we had 68 check ins. We had five pieces of traffic. I wish to thank everyone for checking in, and don't forget that the Heart of America Radio Club does meet every third Tuesday of the month at 7.30 p.m. to 11 West Armor at the Red Cross Building. Hope to see every one of you there. This is KM0E acting as net control, wishing to turn it over to normal use, the repeater that is. And uh, one quickie, N0RTQ. If you happen to be out there Tom, I'd like to give you a call and give you my net report tonight, if possible. If you're not there and you don't answer, it's all open to Lloyd and people wanting to ask him questions. KM0E, thanks everyone to, for checking in tonight. Good night, Jim. Yes. Yeah. Kansas City Royals, this one, six to five over Milwaukee. To be zero EJJ, night all. We are in a severe thunderstorm watch until 4 o'clock tomorrow morning. N0 UOV, I'm clear. There is weather approaching on the radar. WA0 TV. Jim, I'm not sure if I made it in or not. I'll be home in about five minutes. N0 RTQ. Okay, call me please, Came 0 Thank you, guys. And Lloyd, take, a, take it away with the question. I'm sorry I had to close her down, but i got to get to bed and get the girls to bed. W0AT, repeater, Kansas City, Missouri. Let somebody get me to bed. Oh, we all got problems, don't we? <laughs> RJE, I'll be here for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Burr, what do you know about transmission lines? I know a cotton pick and think about them. And I don't know, is that, is that the line running from, the, from your... your Differential up to just behind your flywheel there. Three speed, four speed, and automatic, NW0S. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's either automatic or a, a manual shift. Lloyd, I have a question, N0RTQ. You would. Oh, it's just a simple one. The, uh, the maximum uh, power that a uh, piece of coax will hold that is under, I guess, uh, with a perfect match. Like if it says it'll take a kilowatt and you have a kilowatt going in and it's a perfect match, you're fine. What happens if your antenna's got a major mismatch uh, between uh, the coax and the antenna? Will that mean that you can't kick as much power into it or will the, the mismatch uh, between the reflected power and the forward power still equal a kilowatt? Well, that means that you can easily exceed the rating of your line. Uh, because of the reflected power. Okay, thank you. N zero RTQ. See, that didn't hurt. Uh, d just forget about uh, mismatches and things like that. Think, think of it as a transmission line with the 
with the proper load on each other and 